it's just very raw and honest, which kind of came from me deciding that I didn't want to hold back anymore. Um, you know, I was deciding that I'm just going to say whatever it is I want to say in my music and if people like it, that's great. If they don't like it, oh well. Um, but I guess that's what music is all about anyway. <laughs> You're my last cigarette, a broken bell. I put you out and I can't help but pick you up again. Hi, my name is Kati Gleason. I'm a singer songwriter from Melbourne, Australia, and I now live in Hollywood with my dog. And she's from San Diego. I Would Kill is what I would say probably one of my most honest records. It came from a very desperate situation and feeling. Um, so it's kind of about being in a self-destructive toxic cycle. So for some people they're in very toxic relationships. Who hasn't been there? Some people, you know, might have an addiction to something like food. <laughs> I just put my hands up. For other people, it's, it can also be um, drugs and alcohol. It's, it's something that is self-destructive and it's this horrible cycle that you put yourself through. And this song is about catching yourself in the middle of the cycle and, you know, being completely honest and going, I would kill to stop this right now, but the truth is I'd kill to have it. I wanted it to be very stripped back. I wanted it to reflect the actual emotion of the song. There were a lot of tears. The tears you see are real. I was wearing the, um, the color tags of my late and beautiful baby Kestra. She was like my last connection to home. I mean, Kestra was always with me when I was songwriting and, you know, if I was going through a hard time. So when I suddenly lost her out of nowhere, that was, that was really, really hard. When I fall in love, I fall in love hard. You know, if there is some sort of food that I am enjoying at that time, I literally, that's the only thing that I will think about. I just have a very addictive personality and I just know that there's so many other people out there that go through that. There is there is no way to just kind of get over this sort of stuff. It's, it's very deeply seated. I always found music to be kind of like a best friend to me. When I was growing up in elementary school, I was like 200 pounds and I was diagnosed as being obese and that left me open to bullying and I had that Regina George type of girl in, in my friendship group that would like invite me in and then kick me out. And then there was like this kid that would come up to me every day and he would just punch me in the face. It's definitely not about the grass is greener on the other side. You know, once I got healthy and lost all the weight, I was still teased and bullied. Uh, it's just about noticing what's going on within yourself. And that's what I did with songwriting and letting yourself completely break down. It's totally okay to do that. Just, you know, right place, right time. <laughs> so the upside to being completely raw and honest with yourself and laying your heart out there on the line for everyone to see and hear is that it can open you up to um, just this whole other world of creation and experience and it it's allowed me to write some truly positive songs uh, from a very honest place so yeah <laughs> in your late I feel so free you can take me down girls baby I believe so this is a didgeridoo. I really, really wanted this gorgeous instrument in a track of mine. So that's how Ride the Wave was created, which is a, it's very smooth. It's kind of about just going with the flow and feeling the energy of life. And I wanted it to capture the magic of Australia and Australians, because we, <laughs> we're very much go with the flow. 
So the concept of the music video Ride the Wave is that you go to an art gallery and all of the exhibits come to life around you. being so open and honest. I know that we all really, really just want to laugh and be happy and sometimes life is hard enough as it is, but it's allowed me to really, really truly connect with the special agents who are kind of, you know, they're my fans and we talk every day on live streaming and on Twitter and, and we just, we hang out and we talk about life and music and be completely open and honest with and they totally get me and I totally get them and we're all kind of weirdos together. <laughs> music is the universal language. It's, it's, it's the language for emotion. It's, it's a way we can all connect with each other and realize that we're all one and our experiences may be different, our backgrounds may be different, but the emotions that we go through are exactly the same. And just by knowing that and knowing you're not alone, I think that's like, it's awesome. I'm gonna be an old lady with the dog. Yes. Yep, gonna walk into the cafe with my dog. And we'll just be like, what's up, people? Got my old nana outfit on. Got my old nana pigtails. She doesn't have a care in the world because Gertrude, yes, she has lived her life as a sex, one sexy, sexy lady. And she tends to get whatever she wants. Whenever she wants it. I make the sexiest faces. Do you like my model pose? Do you think I'll be a Victoria's Secret model? Oh, no, Dorothy. How many chins do I have right now? Google Cartier Gleason fat. You'll find plenty of photos of me having about 10 chins. That's what's going on, little lady. You may have seen me on a video that kind of went around. Um, it was kind of went around on Facebook for a bit and YouTube where I played Elsa, rapping like a boss. Oh, oh, oh. I have built a, a castle of ice around, around my heart. It's slowly melting with every song and emotional breakdown I have. I used to like, after I'd perform, at, usually it was at school, and I'd sing in front of people, I'd stick my head in my backpack like I was a freaking ostrich. I went from being this person, this is how I would sing. The king, the king is on the list. Check the list, he's on the list, he's always on the list. All of the voices in my head. <laughs> 